product and process requirements. Now, what do the requirements include? I'm asking you this question, so you should think of all the types of requirements whenever we mention the word requirements in the future. Requirements can be divided into two categories. Product and process requirements. Product requirements describe the software being created, while process requirements are the constraints and limits on how the software will be created. For example, the client may ask that the language used to develop the software is Java. The database is SQL. Yes, he has the right to put those constraints. He may also choose his preferred verification techniques. Also, requirements could include the overall process that should be followed. Will the process include unit testing? What about continuous integration? Are we going to add a server to the system or not? Where is that server and when will it be available? All these should be included in the software process requirements. Process requirements may be imposed directly by the development organization, the customer or a third party such as a safety regulator. On the other hand, product requirements will dictate what the software must do and what users must be able to do with the software. These are called functional requirements. The requirements should also include non-functional requirements, such as the software's expected performance behavior. For example, the minimum memory requirements and acceptable minimum speed. Non-functional requirements also include intended probability characteristics that's the ability to move to a new platform, and usability, which is ease of use by the end user, and many other quality attributes. We will talk in detail about the functional and non-functional requirements in the next video. Product and process requirements are closely linked. A product requirement could be said to specify the implementation required to support a process requirement. For example, a requirement that the product is maintainable, which is a product requirement, often is addressed by imposing requirements to follow particular development styles, style guides, a review or inspection process. Those are process requirements. Meanwhile, a process requirement could be set to specify the activities required to support a product requirement. For example, a maximum development cost requirement which is a process requirement, may be imposed to help achieve a maximum sales price requirement, which is a product requirement. Before I end this video, I want to address some of the objections I get from my students regarding considering process requirements. So, before you disagree with me on that, I want you to imagine not including such process requirements. Couldn't we easily forget about it? You might say that we can put it in the contract. Well, what if the contract is already signed? Should we drop such requirements? Can you imagine delivering the software using Oracle instead of SQL per the customer's request because we forgot to store such a requirement? The client might already have purchased a SQL database server. Therefore, it's crucial that we consider process requirements as we do with product requirements. The analyst is the only interface with the customer if such process requirements get lost, it will produce an undesirable product. Usually, there is a section in the requirements document that holds the process requirements.